Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we will be looking at the development of the liver and gallbladder. We will be looking at the development of the liver and gallbladder. Around third week, something happened in the developing embryo. Cephalocodal folding happened. And because of this folding, the guts of the embryo is divided into three. This is the gut of the embryo. You know, initially the embryo is like a disc, but after the folding, this gut looks like this and is divided into three the foregut, the mid gut, and the hind gut. And each of these guts give rise to some certain structures in the body. So, the liver and the gallbladder develops from the four gods. I decided to start from here so that we understand what we mean by the four gods, the mid gods, and the hind gods. The liver develops from the four gods. So, there are structures that develop from the four gods, like the liver, the pancreas, the duodenum, and the rest of them. They all develop from the four gods. So, around the middle of the third week, or towards the fourth week, at the distal part of the four gods here, some endodermal cells begin to thicken. They begin to proliferate and divide, and they thicken to form this thickening here. They proliferate and divide to form this thickening here, which is known as the liver board. The liver board can also be called the hepatic board or the hepatic diverticulum. So this is the liver board. This happened in the ventral part of the four gods. So looking at here now, this is the this is the gods, this is the four gods, the mid gut, and the end gut. And you can see at the distal part of the four gods, this is where this thickening happened. And like I told us, this happened at the ventral part of the of the four gods. So this is the ventral mesogastrum. This is the ventral mesogastrum and this is the septum transversum. So this thickening here now begin to elongate. So you can see here that this thickening elongates. The hepatic board or the liver board begin to elongate. It grows crossing or passing through the ventral mesogastrum. Then it moves towards the septum transversum. Then fast forward to here, you can see that as this liver board elongates and grows towards the septum transversum, it begins to form branches. You can see the branch, it begins to form branches, or rather, it divides into two. It divides into two. The first part. The upper division is known as the pars hepatica. The upper division is known as the pars hepatica. And it is the pars hepatica that gave rise to the hepatic duct. While the lower division here is known as the pars cystica, which gave rise to the cystic duct and the gallbladder. But we will come to that. So as this Pass hepatica is approaching the septum transversum. As it is growing into it, some cells of the septum transversum or the cells of the septum transversum begin to disintegrate. They begin to break down. And as they break down, they form, they come together to form a structure known as the hepatic trabacola. So, and eventually give rise to the liver. So the cells of the septum transversum immediately the pass hepatica grows into the septum transversum. The cells of the septum transversum form disintegrate to form the hepatic trabacula and eventually form the liver. And this is it. And this pass hepatica eventually gives rise to the hepatic duct. You can see it. The right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct. Then, as the cells of the septum transversum begin to break down, also the vitelline vein and the umbilical vein lie in the septum transversum. 
So as the cells of the septum transversum begin to disintegrate, as they disintegrate to form the hepatic trabecula, the vitelline vein and the umbilical vein that lie in the septum transversum also begin to disintegrate to form the sinusoids of the liver. To form the sinusoid of the liver. Then the mesoderm of the septum transversum gave rise to the Kupfer cells of the liver. The hematopoietic cells of the liver, it gave rise to the lesser omentum that lie in the fissure for ligamentum venosum. It gave rise to the falciform ligament that divides the liver into right and the left lobe. And it also gave rise to the, the capsule, the connective tissue covering of the liver. So this is what the mesoderm of the septum transversum gives rise to. Then the endoderm of the hepatic board gives rise to the parenchyma of the liver and also the bicapillaries. So this is what happened in the development of the liver. So coming down to the parcistica, the parcistica begin to, to grow. It begins to grow and eventually as, as it keeps growing, it eventually gives rise to the gallbladder and also the cystic duct. And this hepatic board remains the bile duct. And this hepatic board remains the bile duct. Then if you notice the bile ducts open into the ventral aspect because this four gods, this four gods here gave rise to the duodenum. So this part of the four gods that the blood begins to form from is what gave rise to the duodenum. So initially the liver board was growing on the ventral aspect. Remember the ventral mesogastrum. So it was growing on the ventral aspect, but after the looping of the duodenum, you can see here that it's come to lie on the dosomedia aspect. After the development of the duodenum and the looping of the duodenum, this liver board that eventually gave rise to the bile duct now come to rearrange and be open into the, the dosomedia aspect of the duodenum. So this part gave rise to duodenum and that is where it opens. After this development, by the 10th week, the liver forms about 10% of the total weight of the developing embryo. Then coming to the seventh month, the liver come to form about 5% of the weight of the developing embryo. Then the development, you know that the fetal liver helps in hemophysis and also production of bile. So by third month, the liver must have developed to the extent that it is capable of coming by or producing by on its own by the third month. And that is what happened. If you notice, the first two of a newborn is normally black. And that stool is called meconium. It is called meconium. And it is black as a result of the presence of by in the in the stew. That is why it is black. So that is it. Then coming to the molecular regulation of these developments, two factors regulate the development of the liver at the molecular level. The first one is fibroblast growth factor, and the second one is bone morphogenetic proteins. So these two regulate the development of the liver at the molecular level. Then coming to the clinicals, we have what is called the red cells liver. The red cells liver is kind of a, an, a protrusion or an extension of the right lobe. We also have an accessory liver that is found in the falciform ligament. It's also a clinical case. Then we also have the absence of the quadrate lobe and also the absence of the gallbladder. Then we also have the duplication of the gallbladder. This gallbladder you are seeing now, it duplicates. Eh? Instead of developing one gallbladder, two gallbladder are formed. And it can be complete and it can be incomplete. Complete is that the 
duplication is complete or true. That is, you have two gallbladder. Why incomplete means that you have one gallbladder, but there is a separation here, but it is not totally complete. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.